All right, so the next question that I get um, is, Julie, how did you get started with polyamory? And boy, is that a loaded question because it wasn't just that I woke up one day and said, hmm, I want to try this, uh, but rather a natural progression. So when I was a child, um, I'm going to stun you and blow you away with my artwork again. Uh, this was my family. That's my mom. That's my dad. That's Jen and I. Uh, my mom previously was married to a man named Danny, and they had a son named Chris. Uh, a lot of you knew Chris. Um, so he wasn't actually my full brother. He is my half-brother. Uh, but we always dropped the half because we're brothers and sisters. I'm not going to talk too much about them. Uh, I only ever really said five words to this man in my entire life. And my father was married previously to a woman named Gail. And I have three beautiful older siblings who are just amazing. If you know them, then you know why I think the world of them. Um, and then, you know, my, my parents got married and they had Jen and I. And, uh, you know, we're inseparable like peas in a pod. Um, right, so I'm going to talk about Gail a little bit here. My father is no longer romantically linked to Gail. Um, but they decided to be better people and not bitter people. And they put us first. And that was really amazing. Um, I'm sure that was a very difficult transition for them and that they could do with that at all um, is amazing. And so I grew up without thinking this was weird. This was, this was normal for me. Um, Gail lived just down the road from us. If she had a flat tire, she would call us. Um, if we had problems, we would call her. Like, and, and even when my mother's mother, my maternal grandmother, went into a nursing home, Gail was one of her nurses. So this was, this was huge. She's a huge part of our lives, and uh, my life would certainly be missing a huge element were she not in it. So I grew up very comfortable with the idea that love could be in several different forms and in several different ways, and it didn't have to subscribe to just one particular kind. Um, so yeah, so I think that was my base. And then um, when I got with Matt, we were very monogamous in the beginning. And this was not a, you know, a, an option that I thought we were going to end up taking. Uh, at the time, I'd never even heard of polyamory. Uh, it would still be a few years before that even became an option. So um, what did happen uh, was that we would be introduced to these new concepts because we live in a rather progressive city. Boston just <laughs> is really kind of at the forefront of everything, uh, or one of the bigger cities that is anyway. Uh, so we'd see people who were, you know, a couple dating another woman or a couple dating another man. And we would ask each other, you know, we would take each other's temperature. What do you think about that? How do you feel about that? Isn't that interesting? And it turned out that we were compatible in different concepts, like in, in that in that particular area, um, with adventurousness, and there were some other things that I'm not going to really go into because that was between Matt and I and whoever we were with. Um, but it was, you know, it was this beautiful exploration, and we got to learn new things about ourselves and each other at that same time, and it was done very positively. We. It wasn't something that was like a damage control situation where we did the thing and then we went back and asked how we felt about it. We did a lot of prep work before we got to that point. So that helped a lot. Um, and again, like what I talk about with communication, communication is such a big part of polyamory. You have to be able to talk to your partner. Um, which isn't just, I mean, you're still going to mess this up. It's impossible to be perfect all the time, but uh, for the most part, you need to be able to talk about things. Um, so yeah, it just naturally like progressed from there. We we met um, this great community out here in Boston, this poly community that was just so open and welcoming and warm, um, and very supportive of whatever I chose to do. So if I had decided to stay monogamous at that point or go back to monogamy or whatever, they would not have excluded me for that. They would not have said, "Oh, you know, we, we we're we're poly only." you know, take a hike or anything like that. They're such wonderful people. And they're so, I think that's important. That's such an important key is to have that support 
and to not feel pressured. Um, I don't respond well to pressure in that sense. Uh, if I feel like you're making me do something that I don't want to do, <laughs> it gets bad. So <laughs> it felt nice that I didn't have to figure out what my label was before I discovered it. I didn't have to do and participate in things I didn't want to before I was ready for that. Um, and they, you know, they would introduce me to small concepts and I would think about those things and, and you know, decide whether or not that fit me. Uh, so that was so important and that's another reason why I'm out here doing this is that it doesn't have to be a whole community, but if you have somebody that you can talk to, somebody that can explain these concepts to you and, and kind of walk you through it a little bit, it gives you a better idea so you're not just jumping into something and, you know, thinking it's going to be expecting something and getting something else in return. Right, so one of the first concepts, ugh, cat hair, one of the very first concepts they introduced me to that made a lot of sense to me <coughs> was this concept here. And I just have to pull this up and most of my poly friends understand what this is. <coughs> Monogamous friends and most of my friends believe love is like a pizza. So there's a slice here for your parents slice here for your pets, maybe a slice for your brothers and sisters, and maybe that slice for a really cool college friend that you were like best friends with or whatever. And then like maybe your spouse is in here. And so like, and, and any children you have or whatever, you know, like, but the point is you have these slices and you have to give it away. And once the slices are gone, that's it. So when people who use this concept of love try to understand what it is that I do, they get really confused because they think that I'm taking a piece of slice from here you know, and a piece of a slice from there and tacking it together and giving it to somebody else, which means that I'm taking my love away from somebody else, you know, from, from somebody important, and giving it to somebody else. And that concept is very confusing. And it would be if that's how my concept of love worked <clears throat> but curiously whenever I mention this to um, parents they seem to get this really quickly love for your children is not like a pizza wheel um, you love them for different reasons and you don't have a favorite you're not taking love away from one child who enjoys James Taylor records and giving it to a child who listens to the same music you do you're just appreciating different things about them. It's not taking away from one to give to the other, it's just, it just is. <clears throat> Which is why this is our symbol for polyamory, it is a heart with an infinite symbol. We're not taking things away from one person to love another. We love both of them. It's just different flavors. Um, it's not loving the color pink any less because you like the color blue, you're just liking them both. Um, it takes a little while to adjust to that. It's a difficult concept to get into for a video um, where I'm just trying to kind of cover the bases. So if you have more questions about that particular bit of it, feel free to ask and I will try to get you as much information as I can. Um, but yeah, so, then the next question becomes, uh, or rather the next, qu yeah, the next question is, how many relationships are you in? And there's a saying in polyamory that love is infinite, time is not. Uh, love might constantly renew itself, and there might constantly be more, but there's only 24 hours in the day. And people like me get overwhelmed very quickly when we're expected to be too social. I'm not a very social person in like physicality. I'm online quite a bit, so y'all know that you can reach me on Facebook or Skype or wherever. Um, but I need my alone time. So for me, it's always a balance. Um, I choose to have two or three real casual, between casual and serious relationships outside of my marriage. Um, but it really largely depends on who I'm with. Each person is different. Um, I, I, I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you've been in a couple of monogamous relationships and each one of those is different. Um, maybe not necessarily like wildly different, but you know, there's, there's different 
settings and different sections and different things that you take into account for and, and uh, different preferences with each person. So same concept. Um, it, it's not a cookie cutter situation, so it's hard to say. It depends on the year. It depends on the person that I'm with. It depends on am I in a depressive phase or not? Um, and also I just want to give like a huge shout out to the people that I've dated and dealt with all of this. <laughs> You're amazing, and you're you you're brilliant, and um, yeah. So, if you have questions about how polyamory uh, couples look at love as an infinite resource, please feel free to fire those away. But uh, uh, to explain further, it's gonna take far longer than I have for this video.